I'm Sec Engineers. The first question that I'm most commonly asked is how do I learn cloud security or how do I get better at cloud security? Now, I'm not sure exactly what are the multiple ways to learn cloud security, but here's how I learn cloud security and I consider myself pretty good at cloud security. So let's get started and let's get started now. I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step approach as to how you can learn cloud security. And this is going to help you kind of put in the reps that you need to do to actually learn cloud security and achieve a great degree of competence in cloud security. However, just like any other learning, remember that you need to practice, practice, practice. It's only when you do that, that you can actually hope to gain great skills in this space. This space is something that you can do a lot with, you can achieve a lot in, you can go really far with cloud security, but it's up to you to do the work. So I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step approach of how I learned cloud security, and you will see the same kind of an approach reflected in our courses on AppSec Engineer on cloud security. So the same approach that I use to learn cloud security has been used in that as well, and I consider that the most effective way to learn cloud security. So. We're going to get started with our step-by-step -step approach to learn cloud security. So here's how I learn cloud security. So this I hope is going to be useful for you to understand how you can learn cloud security as well. I do believe that this isn't a method that works and I think it can work for a lot of people or nearly anyone. Of course, you might need to make a few adjustments for your specific style of learning. Now let's get started with step one. We're gonna go through it step by step as to how you can do this. Let's start off with step one, which is basically the first step, pick a cloud. Now, a lot of people want to get good at multiple clouds. They wanna get good at AWS, Azure, GCP, whatever. That's great. I happen to have competence in multiple clouds, but remember that just by trying to learn everything, you end up learning nothing. So pick one cloud, get great at it, and then maybe start to use the same knowledge in other places. So you can pick any cloud. You can pick AWS, you can pick Azure, you can pick Google Cloud, you can pick Oracle Cloud, whatever is the cloud provider of choice, go ahead and pick it. The point here is that you are picking a cloud simply because that cloud helps you get a good knowledge of cloud environment itself. And then of course, get a good knowledge of cloud security. Now, which cloud should you pick? That really depends, right? Now, let's say you're working in a company and the company uses AWS. For instance, my company, we use a lot of AWS. We do use others as well, but we use a lot of AWS. So if your company is already using AWS, there's a good chance that you can easily get access to and start learning AWS. And you can also see the value you add by learning cloud security on AWS because your company will now consider you more valuable. You have more capability to deliver in your company as well as other companies. So generally I've seen that AWS is the most popular choice because a lot of companies are on AWS. However, that's not always the case. Your company might be using Google Cloud or your team may be using Azure, whatever it is. Whatever works for you, pick it. Because the idea here should be I'm going to get good at one thing or one cloud, and then you will find that the skills are very transferable to another cloud. So don't worry about it. Pick a cloud, get good at it, and then go to another one because it's almost the same concepts as you go through multiple clouds. You have the same set of concepts like IAM, RBAC, ABAC. You might have the same kind of services. You typically have the same kind of security parameters and paradigms that you are dealing with in multiple clouds. So do not worry too much about which cloud to pick. Pick whatever works for you. Pick whatever your organization is working on or your team is working on. That's typically what I say when I talk about step one, which is pick the cloud. So let's move on to the next step, which is pick a stack. Let's dial back a little bit. You really want to learn the cloud because you want to learn to secure workloads or secure your organization's resources or applications on the cloud. That's what you really want to do. Otherwise, you really would not learn cloud security. You don't really care about it, right? So cloud security is really, for you, security of workloads. So for you, you want to be able to pick a stack that you want to deploy on that cloud to be able to learn that cloud. That's how it should work, and that's how you want to do it. So you have to pick a stack that you want to deploy. 
Now, a stack could be of different types. You could have a very traditional stack. You could have like a server database type of stack, and you could have a pretty traditional deployment. That is fine. You may decide to go in for a containerized application style stack, which is you can use containers either in Kubernetes or run managed containers with Fargate or some other managed containerized service on the cloud or you might decide to go with functions as a service. Pick a stack, pick an application, or pick a typical scenario where you would have a certain type of application deployed, and then learn it from that standpoint. It's very important for you to pick a stack because, and you can learn this over time. So let's say you start off with a traditional server style stack, which is this one where you have servers and you deploy a database server, you deploy an app server, you deploy a web server, whatever it is, and then you start securing that or deploying it and then secure it. That's fine, but you can start progressing from there. So understand how the workloads work, understand how the services work, understand how object storage work, all of that stuff you can start to define by picking your stack. So stack picking is very important. Pick your stack and go for it. I would suggest if you're just starting off, go with a more traditional server style stack then go into containers and then go to functions as a service. That is just my opinion, but it may not mean much to you. You may already be quite familiar with one or two of these different things. You might decide to already start off with this or whatever it is. It doesn't really matter. Picking a stack to start off with is very important because that gives you the ability to visualize what actually happens when a real world application is deployed on the cloud. So understand that, pick a stack, and pick the stack that works for you. So the next step or step three is deploy it and deploy it badly. Now, this would probably shock some of you because I say deploy it badly. Now, what does this mean? Let's think about that. Now, let's talk about step number three, which is deploy it and deploy it badly. Now, I say deploy it badly simply because I think you are going to make, and I'm quite sure you're going to make a whole bunch of mistakes when our security mistakes when you are deploying it for the first time. Now remember, step three is to basically ensure that you deploy your application to the cloud, no matter what, no matter how well you secure it, doesn't really matter. Even if you don't secure it, that's fine. Deploy it badly. But there are a few things you have to keep in mind. Deploy it badly, but deploy it with infrastructure as code, right? Don't deploy it manually. Try and not do that. I mean, even if you have to, but always make sure that you deploy it with infrastructure as code. Because end of the day, that's how apps get deployed to the cloud. They don't get deployed through clicking on a console and then you pointing a mouse to that particular console and dragging and dropping stuff on screen. That is typically not how real world applications are deployed on the cloud. So learn how to do it even badly. I'm sure your first deployment is gonna be insecure as all hell. I remember when I did my first deployment of a server on EC2 on Amazon, it was just, horrible. I just gave star IAM rules. I didn't care which subnet the database was in. I didn't really care about network security groups or network security controls for the servers that I was deploying. I did not care. I was learning it. So it's okay. That's perfectly fine. Deploy it badly. It's what you need to do to get to the next rite of passage, which is deploying it more securely. So remember that deploy it badly, but, but, but always use infrastructure as code, even if you deploy it badly. Step four, or the last step, is securing it layer by layer. Let's get into it. So up to step three, you've deployed your application, you've deployed it badly, and I'm sure when you look at that particular application, you'll realize that there are a whole bunch of security issues that you have created. You might have terrible IAM rules that your server is running with, so it might have too many privileges on your cloud, you might not have any firewall rules, any kind of VPC rules, any kind of network security rules on your environment, on the server deployment that you've done. You might have not split up or you might have not created different subnets for different deployments. So a database needs to run on a private subnet. A web server might need to run on a public subnet. You might not have configured rules between the subnets. You might have not set up encryption. You might have not set up logging. You might have not done a whole bunch of things up to step three. Now, step four is you take a look at your deployment, maybe do a diagram of it, and then start to secure it layer by layer, which means that start looking at the network, maybe look, put in subnets, your firewall rules, then look at your host configuration, maybe put in some security capabilities there in terms of 
uh, metadata security, add maybe some host-based security practices like vulnerability scanning, maybe something else around disk encryption, depending on your use case and how, how deep you want to go, right? So do that and then go that way layer by layer. So constantly look at the big picture and then zoom down into the specific security practices that you want to put in at each layer and start deploying that and do that by modifying your infrastructure as code script as well. So remember up to step three, you're done infrastructure as code, use the same infrastructure as code to extend that to make it more secure. This way you are actually understanding the challenges and the opportunities that come with securing the cloud. So this is what I did and this is how I learned because by doing this, I actually experientially understood what an insecure deployment looks like and then I understood what a secure deployment looks like. And that was really, really powerful as far as I saw. So this helped me extensively and this gave me a much better control and hold of my subject matter when I actually was doing cloud security training or cloud security consulting for many of my clients. This really helped me out in a major way. So this is how I learned cloud security and this is how I teach cloud security. In fact, on AppSec Engineer, you will find that this is how we actually teach cloud security. We actually make you deploy insecure stuff and then secure it and so on and so forth. In fact, even in our classes at Black Hat or other events, we always do attack, detect, defense, where we showcase how something can be attacked by deploying it badly and then securing it over time. So I learned it this way. I think it makes a lot of sense for you to learn it this way if you want to be great with cloud security. And as always, remember, with anything, practice, practice, practice. You need to put in the reps if you want to get great at something. So that's no substitute for this. There's no shortcut. There's no hack. You have to do it that way. With that, I come to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in another one. Thanks so much.